Jeff asks a really interesting question. In the spring, I will be selling my house and downsizing to, most likely, a studio apartment for a year or so. By selling my house and moving 35 miles away, I will be losing both of my home gens. I have a small garage that I use for kettlebells, jump rope, burpees, and a few other movements I can do in that small space. I also have the majority of my weights and equipment in a friend's machine shed. This includes two squat racks, about 600 pounds of plates. This is good. Uh, some really good uh, dumbbells, plyo boxes. He's got a echo bike, a Concept 2 rower, a skier, a ski erg, huh? and a bike. Wow, <laughs> that's a good home gym. Two really good setups. I want to avoid a gym for as long as I can at the new place. And I was wondering if you would recommend uh, for a very small space. My initial thought would be to bring the Concept 2 bike and some kettlebells. I would be willing to buy a few more than the two. He's got two 30-pounders and two 40-pounder kettlebells I have. What types of movements would you recommend in such a small space? And how would you uh, switch it up to avoid boredom and repetitiveness? Any insights would be great. Well, it's interesting because the one thing I would buy, because I, okay, so this, hap this happened to me. Uh, when I was living here in Utah for a long time and uh, we moved out to Burlingame and I went from having, you know, my gym had, you know, all kinds of chains and an incline bench and, you know, all kinds of good stuff, great Olympic bars. And then I moved into a, an apartment in Burlingame, California. And all I really had, I had a TRX, uh, a suspension trainer and I had a, a, I had a, a single kettlebell, my 28 uh, kilo. I, I liked it a lot. Uh, I was going through some, you know, just some general physical issues at the time that were easy to work out. And, but it was kind of exciting just to just have those two pieces of equipment. So all my pulling and my mobility and a lot of my push-ups were done with the suspension trainer. And then uh, I did a whole bunch of classic, traditional, the big six of the RKC, the swing, the get-up, the snatch, the clean, the press, and the and uh, the squat, which I almost forgot, uh, which is funny because it's the goblet squat. Um, yeah, I you can do everything. When you mention the concept too, now that would just be something if you if you like the if you like rowing or whatever one you like, I would take the one you like the most. Downside of a concept too, it's massive. Okay, it's a big it's a big engine now. I always folded mine up and it sits into, a, you know, into a space, but it's still big. And, you know, just if you're going to be in a, did you say a uh, studio apartment? Yeah, that thing is always going to be in sight. So, you know, if you bring over uh, uh, a friend, uh, you know, there's your concept two rower right there. Nice thing about that kettlebell and the suspension trainer, you can always kind of put them away. You can put them inside of a closet. You can put them under a bed. That's just, that's just a, thing for me it's it's not a big deal one thing that i really got smarter at and i think it really helped me with easy strength uh, especially writing the this last book the omni book is by only having a 28 and being on a, a situation where i really couldn't lose a bell it taught me to i would i would push myself to a reasonable rep range um if you know if i'm doing the 28 and by the way the 28, I, you know, if I'm doing, you know, it, I'm much stronger than a 28, so I could do it weight or press. I could do the bottoms up press. So if I'm on the, the balcony or your, your living room doing presses, I get to say like we're going five, six, and then seven starts to go, uh, bring it down, put it to the ground and come back and fight another day. Come back and, you know, take another set. So it's like the workout counts, uh, calls for 12s, okay, in the clean and press. And you only get like uh, seven before they get ugly, then it's seven, and that's okay. Um, if you're training in a situation that you can't drop weights, that you, you're really tight on wiggle room, uh, this concept of, you know, perceived exertion is really good. I'm a big fan of it. Easy strength is based on it. I'd rather you, you know, chase, you know, reasonable reps for 40 days and then go for a max than, you know, fail, fail, miss, fail, fail, miss, you know, you know, your spotter deadlifted it off you, you know, cheat reps. I'd rather you do that because I think long term, 
Uh, the body learns with success, not with multiple failures. That's my opinion, and I, I, I'm sticking to it. I, I So I would say, if you bring the kettlebells and then another piece of equipment, and just, you know, kind of, you know, it might be a good thing. You've also got that, uh, the bike, you know, kind of fold your arms, you know, kind of go, can I see myself rowing, you know, five days a week for the next year? Now, I can't see myself doing that. But with a bike, I could see myself doing it because I would put on a football game and 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 watch the game and bike. So I don't think I could watch a football game on a ski erg, though that would be a fun. Now there, there, all you guys are looking for challenges. Watch an entire uh, entire football game using the ski erg. But here's the thing: uh, I get to question you about every situation and every penalty and every play. Uh, I don't know if you could do it. That'd be hard to focus. Uh, good luck to you. Hey, would you let me know what you decide? And uh, on the exercises, I think with the kettlebells, you've got the whole the whole buffet table is in front of you. Um, and this will give you a real good chance to work on your techniques and work on your skills. And remember, as you improve your skills, you're going to see improvements in body composition because you're going to get better and better. Thank you so much.